With me now is Tom Mulcair, CTV's political commentator and former NDP leader. Tom, good morning to you. Good to see you. Good morning, Marcia. Okay, so what's your takeaway? Before we get into the nitty-gritties, what's your headline? Um, if you wanted to win the office pool, copy and paste the results of the last election. No change. And no the, change. the bottom line is all this for that. And Mr. Trudeau's going to wear that for a long time. So will the Liberals. All this for that. Okay, will he really wear it? Are there going to be a lot of questions within his caucus about why he called this election? Yeah, I was just doing a, a radio show with a, a key liberal advisor, and he said, oh, no, Mr. Trudeau can stay as long as he wants. And I, uh, I just nodded and said, that's not exactly a ringing in, endorsement. Look, this was all about the liberals trying to get something for the liberals. He says that he was listening, but people were saying the same thing five weeks ago. No, we don't want an election in the middle of a pandemic. Oh, you're getting an election in the middle of the pandemic because we think the Liberals will get something out of it. Lo and behold, uh, everything has been shaken by the fact that, uh, that this election was held, even though it is the exact same result. Last time, Canadians said, you're going to Ottawa, you get to govern, you're going to work with the other parties because we just don't trust you with a majority. This time, they're looking at Trudeau and saying, hope you get the message because we're sending you back exactly with the same result and you have to work with others and you have to be chastened in your approach to politics now, a little bit less arrogant, a little bit more willing to work with others because we don't trust you with a majority. Aaron O'Toole decided to appeal to the progressive faction of the party. What do you make of the results that we saw last night? Did you think that he would do better? He had to do better, especially in Ontario. Yeah. And the fact that he actually did worse than Sheer in Ontario doesn't bode very well for his future as party leader. I, I know Aaron O'Toole, and I've had a chance to travel with him. I can tell you, honestly, I think he's a really good person. But at the same time, he beat up the right-wing Looney Tunes wing of his party, and a lot of them wound up going over to Maxime Bernier. And now they get to say, hey, you decided to throw in the towel on a lot of what we thought was important on everything from climate change to guns to abortion. You said that you had this different solution and you were going to be able to bring a lot of people into our tent. That has not worked. So there are other people who will be in the offing. There are some familiar faces that will come back. I can think of someone like uh, Pierre Poiliev, who's probably right now uh, dusting off his lines for, for the leadership. But the same way that Scheer pleaded with his membership when he won more votes than Trudeau in 2019, you know, now let's get together and really take these guys on. O'Toole was trying the same thing last night, but I think, Marcia, the result's going to be the exact same. That party is not yet set in, in terms of what it wants to be for the Canadian voting public, and they're going to have to go through this one more time, I think, and I think it might cost Mr. O'Toole his job, frankly. Hmm. Okay, let's talk about uh, Jagmeet Singh. Clearly a disappointment last night. They gained one seat. What happens to him next? He's fine. He's uh, strong in the saddle with the NDP. He did get a little bit more, and the percentage was almost identical. He was doing such a, a stand-up job of holding on to his base and his core vote, I couldn't see him dropping much below 20, and lo and behold, he's actually before below 18. He did not get the breakthrough he had hoped for in the Toronto area, because his polls had been showing between 24 and 26 yeah. percent in the core area of the city of Toronto, and it, and it just simply moved over, as it often does. I can talk to you about that. Ed Broadbent can talk to you about that. It just moved over to the Liberals. The, the Liberals are seen as a lesser evil. I mean, yes, people can feel strongly about climate change and Trudeau's failures on that and his failure on democratic reform and any other number of progressive issues. But at the end of the day, if the choice is between having the Conservatives come in and having yeah, an underperforming Trudeau with his Liberals, a lot of people, as we saw last night, simply move over to the Liberal column. We've talked a lot about Annamie Paul, Tom. Do you think she'll stay on? Did you think she, she might no, resign no, last night? She does. She doesn't have the slightest chance of staying on. I mean, there's an expression in politics. It's called, you know, getting your deposit back because you actually do have to put down a certain amount of money to be able to run an election to keep out, uh, you know, a large number of nuisance candidates. You have to show some interest and some seriousness, and that involves putting down money. You get your deposit back in the expression if you get more than 10 percent of the vote. She didn't get that. Um, I, I always thought that she was a really fresh voice on the Canadian political landscape. Her party decided to otherwise, even though she had just won, they didn't give her money to run her campaign. They behaved horribly with her. 
and as of last night, Elizabeth May musing openly about coming back. That's not a really good way for that party to renew itself, but maybe that's what they have to go through as well. Final question, what's it like to go back to Parliament after an election, especially one where it gets nasty? Lisa Raitt was talking about that uh, earlier on the program with me, saying it could be a little difficult uh, to function, given the tone in those final days and weeks. What's that like, Tom, from your experience? It's going to be harsh, and of course, uh, some of the bravado is going to be Mr. O'Toole wanting to hold on to his job, so he's going to have to make his attacks far more strident. Uh, it'll depend on the tone of Mr. Trudeau back. Mr. Trudeau will have to make a pretty overt deal with the NDP. He says he doesn't want an election in 18 to 24 months, which, by the way, is just the average length of a minority government in Canada. It's just that, 18 to 24 months. We just went through one of those. So if he wants to have the, the NDP support for the next few years, it's going to have to be pretty well a transparent deal. We're going to give you this, this, and this from your program. And then you're going to support our government on its budgets and the like. Mr. Trudeau wouldn't be too keen on making that sort of deal with Yves Francois Blanchet. It's gotten quite nasty on the Quebec side during this campaign, quite personal, uh, both ways. Uh, you know, Trudeau and his team towards the bloc and the bloc right back at them. So I don't think that that's in the cards. And they did it pretty well last time. Sometimes it would be the Conservatives, sometimes the bloc, sometimes the NDP would support the minority Liberals. This time around, I'm getting the clear signal that Trudeau's going to be looking to make a deal with Singh. Singh's got to be careful because his own base is going to have a lot of demands and ex expectations of him. He can't appear to be selling out on any of those core matters like climate change or uh, the promises on housing, for example. Okay. I'm still thinking about what you said about Aaron O'Toole, and I'm wondering, couldn't he make the case that he needs to stick around because if you keep changing leaders, then Canadians don't really know who you are as a party? Um, Number one argument. And by the way, I have nothing but empathy uh, for both Sheer and uh, for, for O'Toole in that position, because I know a little bit what it's like to go through that sort of situation with your own party. Yeah. But even though I feel a great deal of empathy and indeed sympathy, I'm, I'm just observing uh, the past behavior of that Conservative Party. It was cobbled together when Stephen Harper, with a lot of strength and an iron fist, brought together the Reform Party element and he brought together the Progressive Conservatives and lo and behold, we got a new party, the Conservative Party, and he ruled that roost for, for many years. What we're seeing now is unless you're able to keep in the, the really right-wing flank, which Harper did, then they're going to drift off. Even though Maxime Bernier only got a small percentage of the vote, you know, you look across the country and having been able to hold on to those maybe 5% finally of the vote uh, of the People's Party of Canada, that, that could have made all the difference in the world. So if it's not Mr. O'Toole, it'll have to be somebody who has the art and the skill of a Stephen Harper. And I don't think that that person exists in the current crop of potential leaders of the Conservatives. Tom, thank you so much. Been a pleasure having Great. you every week or more, every, at least once a week. Well, uh, you know, if it is every 18 to 24 months, maybe we'll be starting <laughs> the next campaign in a year oh, and a half. Oh, gosh. I, somebody had to bring it up today. You're the first <laughs> that we'd be back here sooner rather than later. Uh, Tom, get some rest. Thank you so much for all of thank your you. analysis. As always, really appreciate it. Tom O'Care is CTV's political commentator and, of course, former leader of the NDP.